Well, we're pleased to have with us uh, this afternoon, Nicholas Kokolis. He is the founder of Pi Network. Nicholas, uh, welcome to our program. Thank you very much for having me. You know, I'd like to begin with, um, you know, kind of your thought as to what is it about Pi Network, if you had to explain it to a novice, uh, that makes it unique and uh, advantageous uh, for uh, crypto investors, crypto miners? What do you think about uh, thanks for this question, Dorian. So Pi is uh, really accessible to everyone out there. Uh, people can uh, uh, mine it uh, by themselves uh, using their mobile phones. So as long as you have a mobile device, you can participate. And then once you have mined it, uh, and eventually, uh, especially when we uh, migrate everyone to the mainnet, uh, which we can talk about it later, then you can use that currency to uh, to perform various activities on the network, uh, which we call utilities, so Pi applications and other things. And uh, the the beauty of this is that uh, even people who wouldn't uh, be able to participate in this process, imagine someone in a country that uh, they they wouldn't have a bank account or they wouldn't be able to. Uh, how, how, how do you acquire a uh, Bitcoin, for example, if you don't have a bank account or if you have no way to enter? So, so anyone can actually enter. And then once they enter, they, they are able to uh, participate in those uh, activities. They are able to uh, pay Pi to ask another pioneer for some type of labor, for example. Mm. Uh, you can buy uh, goods and services or you can even get paid for, for services that you provide uh, for others. Great, that's great. And that's nice insight that you gave us there on, on uh, how it works. Um, so what does it mean for the future of mining and crypto mining to have the ability to do this right in the palm of your hands? Um, you know, we think about, you know, the stories that are out there in these data centers that are just using so much electricity and energy and, you know, it's just, it's so heavy. Um, but you guys really revolutionized, you know, how people can mine. What does that mean now for the future of, of mining? Yeah, I think this is the way to go because uh, uh, if you think about it, Bitcoin proved to the world that it is possible to have uh, digital currency and it works. So the first time that it was implemented, it had to be uh, with the way it was to be succeeded. So to succeed, it needed to have servers, it needed to be what it is. Uh, no matter the, how we started, now the world operates mobile. We are living in 2000, it's not 2009 anymore, it's 2022 right. and we're going to the future. So more and more people have exclusively mobile phones and they don't have computers uh, or they're using their iPads and their mobile devices rather than. Mm -hmm. So if you were by saying that uh, you have to exclude all those people from the, from the process, then you're already uh, making something very restrictive. So I think that uh, it is the future and uh, I believe that even all uh, blockchains are uh, thinking towards that direction. Great, great. Um, have, have you raised funding and, and how do you guys make money? Yeah, the, uh, one, one uh, important uh, thing to know about Pi is that uh, we avoided from the very beginning and we uh, the easy way of... Uh, uh, making money by selling the coin uh, through those uh, ICOs uh, that uh, that happened in the crypto space. So Pi has never raised any, um, has never sold any coins for many many years now. We've been operating for three and a half uh, years, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is uh, this is an important aspect. We actually feel this is uh, more natural because usually for companies they uh, may be operating and creating utility and creating their business for several years before they can uh, go on an IPO uh, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden having this uh, unnatural uh, early uh, influx of, uh, of cash uh, uh, can, can create uh, um, uh, unnatural results as well with what we have seen in uh, happening with uh, other uh, uh, news uh, uh, lately that have been um, communicated. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, Pi, Pi, we uh, bootstrapped uh, as much as we could and uh, eventually raised some money as uh, part of a traditional Silicon Valley startup after, from uh, private investors. Got you, got you. So, so where do you want to take the company? What, what's ahead on the road of development and what you know users can see in terms of the experience? Um, you know, in the next, you know, uh, you know, 
uh, year to 18 months, let's say? Well, the goal is to um, have a very useful, widely accessible cryptocurrency that uh, can uh, allow uh, a lot of people to be able to take advantage of the new um, utilities of blockchain. Uh, and uh, by that, I mean, uh, um, there is a lot of innovation that happens with uh, smart money. So once money can have some, some people call it smart contracts, there's multiple ways to think about it, but uh, uh, they, you, it's the first time in the world where you can have uh, things like uh, micro escrows or uh, micro payments or other things that uh, uh, essentially creating a new uh, era of uh, possibilities in the world. So Pi is uh, combining those facilities along with a large network of people um, participating to create something useful for the world. Uh, specific, that's for the longer term, as you said, a year and a half and, and beyond. In the meantime, from now until then, uh, what's important is that uh, we, uh, we are currently in the process of uh, a completing KYC for the members of, uh, of the network. So uh, Pi is going to have uh, millions of people who uh, are crypto ready and KYC than real people, real accounts um, uh, on it. So we are currently in the process of uh, uh, doing this. And the goal is that once we have a large number of people who have uh, initially KYC to migrate their balances into their mainnet so that they can start uh, um, exploring and uh, using the, the currency. Gotcha. Final question. Um, you know, we've just seen um, really an implosion in the cryptocurrency market, as we've seen in the regular, you know, equity markets. Um, are you concerned about what you're seeing um, just broadly in the crypto space? Um, and actually, is it good? Is it clearing out kind of the, the bad apples um, in the industry that uh, um, and, and then allowing it to kind of move forward in a better place? What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, it's uh, it's uh, usually a, an, an unpleasant thing to hear that any market may be going up and down. At the same time, it is a natural cycle that it happens all the time. And we have seen it uh, in crypto multiple times as well, that uh, there is a cycle. Um, mm -hmm. I also agree with the uh, second part of your question that you mentioned that uh, uh, this helped helps possibly clear out some uh, uh, activities that are maybe happening with the wrong incentives. So mm -hmm. things that are more uh, less of uh, pointing uh, towards uh, something useful, but more um, leading the world towards, uh, let's say, games, financial games that uh, they can trick people. That that, that clears out the, the landscape. But overall for Pi, I, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we never raised uh, we never uh, we never sold pi to any person so there's no one who can uh, uh, be uh, sad that the down cycle is here right now because no one bought it at a higher price and now it's a lower price because no one could uh, could buy it uh, to begin with um so essentially to the pi network uh, the 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 way that the currency is used hasn't really been affected by the external market at all because we can give you an example. Right now, people are spending one pi to uh, request to be KYC by the network. This one pi, and everybody is paying one pi, this one pi is pooled and then distributed to some human validators, other people in the network for helping complete the validation. So there's a pool of pi that is then being paid out to the, to the validators. So within the pi network, before the crash, people were paying one pi, during the crash, they were still paying one pi, and after the crash, they're still paying one pi, and they're getting paid the same amount that, that the validators they would. So it was completely no no effect at the moment. So now in the future, of course, we all live in a connected world, right. and uh, we don't necessarily uh, it's not necessarily always going to be living in a vacuum. But um, uh, that's the current situation. So so what what's a pi worth? I'm curious. <laughs> so uh, pi is worth what. Uh, the pioneers uh, uh, make it worth. So in this specific case, uh, as I, that I described, uh, you need to spend one pi to buy to to get yourself KYC, and uh, um, that one pi is distributed back to uh, validators, depending on how much uh, how many validations are needed for its vali validation. Um, 
Great. Well, Nicholas Kokalis, we're, yeah. we're, we're grateful to have you with us today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right. Subscribe to our Pi Whales YouTube channel and earn Pi rewards.